What is going on everyone and welcome back to another installment of the Star Wars Exchange's Mandalorian After Show. Uh, episode 3 just came out of Season 3, Chapter 19. Uh, very different sort of episode. Mando sort of just copped the Boba Fett treatment. A lot going on, a lot to talk about. Of course, doing it today with my co-host Mike. How are you going, buddy? I'm doing great. It's uh, another week of two, <laughs> two Star Wars things, the Mandalorian and the Bad Batch. So I'm excited to sit here and discuss because there's a lot of discuss uh to discuss here so i'm very much excited to talk about this episode of course we have special guests joining us yes, this week from the star wars stuff podcast colin weber colin how are you doing today i'm doing great i'm doing great i am on that star wars grind i i keep uh, t- reminding myself that we are not getting jedi fallen i'm uh, not not jedi fallen order Jedi Survivor this month because remember how we had like that grind of where we're gonna have all the episodes yeah. of the Bad yeah. Batch and then Mandalorian and then Jedi Survivor, and uh, I'm I'm just happy that that we're getting all that Star Wars like at once. I'm 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 that guy where like I don't care how big the how big my plate of Star Wars is as as long as I get more and more I'm fine with it. So I love that we're getting these episodes back. Cool. Very stingy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, me and Mike are a bit more stingy. We're sort of like spread it out, spread it out, spread it out, spread yeah. out the butter to the other side of the toast. You know, it's like, yeah, let's, let's share. But I understand. I understand that. It's like no, it's, cool. <laughs> it's a kid on Christmas. It's like you don't want the present to stop. So I understand. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, but yeah, very, very pleased to have Colin joining us today. Um, mm. Of course, you can go check him out on the Star Wars Stuff podcast if, if you don't, if you're not familiar with that podcast. Um, but yeah, let's talk about about Mando because it was, I think, the longest episode of the series we've had. Um, yeah. So obviously, as I said, a lot to talk about. Let's start with you, Colin. What did you think of Chapter 19? What were your overall thoughts? Okay, so I loved the fact that we just stuck with the cliffhanger that we had from last week and that we kind of got our answers right away i was kind of bummed that we didn't see the the mythosaur rise out of the waters or anything i mean i kind of figured we didn't that was more of a pipe dream but i got this sense that sh- that bogatan was kind of hiding this um she was hiding this feeling uh i i mean like of of did she actually see it or or did she i just felt like she was hiding on purpose because she was playing a strategy game in for, for, from like my from like my point of view but with that being said i love that we like got to that and then we just jumped to coruscant which i was not expecting to happen this episode i'm glad that it opened the way that it did uh and the way that it ended it definitely you know raised some questions but overall, I think the pace of the episode was decent. I'm glad the length of it was, you know, uh, almost an hour. Was not expecting that, but I'm I'm pretty content. I'm hoping that we get more action, uh, a lot more action next week, uh, because it kind of felt like Andor too, um, of, of of just the episodes in course. It definitely felt like Andor. Uh, uh, yeah, but definitely, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Mike, what did you think? I thought that this was um, the most, well, I wouldn't say the most tasty, but it was just like a dream Boston cream filled donut. However, like the outer layer was great. I love the the chocolate on top. I love the way the bread was baked. However, I did not like the filling. I don't think I, 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 I liked it. I thought the filling was okay, but I thought there could have been like a better flavor. And that has to do with the, the um, like some of the chorus on stuff with uh, Dr. Pershing and, and his old former coworker. I thought some of the stuff, like I liked it all up to the, maybe like the train sequence where I started feeling just bizarre to me and it's okay. I need to watch it again, but it just started mm-hmm. feeling bizarre and all that. But however, real quick, while, while you remind me, how many times have you guys watched the episode? once uh, twice okay just to think once. that's good to know but yeah continue mike and you me once as well yeah 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 i've only watched it once so um it was just kind of bizarre towards the in the middle but however i thought overall i just was like damn this is good this was good i would have chosen a different filling inside a different cream but it was, mm. it was still good yeah. okay tell and... me you're from chicago by not telling me you're from chicago <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, you lived here oh, once uh, too. It's all right. You, yeah. You know. <laughs> um, so, and also I thought that the dog fight, I thought, oh, yeah. you know, I think the dog fights in Clone Wars and Rebels are good, but it's like, I feel like they don't have a chance or a moment. Like Rebels would have just been like, oh, yay, they blew up the TIE fighters. Great. Moving on. However, in in this, it was all about strategy. But you could see how helpless bo was in her gauntlet fighter. And that whole sequence at the beginning was mm. just spectacular, which I'm, we'll get into. But I just thought it was spectacular. Um, and bo joined the Children of the Watch. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Yeah. Mouth-dropping yeah. moment. Um, Definitely but, excited oh, to talk about that. And, and the eyebrow-raising transition of power happening on Coruscant. Like, talk about mm. just... It was kind of like a knee-jerk reaction for me where it's just like you read some of the stuff that happens in the books and you expect kind of like a that type of vibe and it's like it's not that you know um which which is fine but it's it was just great but um yeah i thought the dr pershing and uh remind me of the of the uh officer's name uh that yeah, i, I forgot know. her name klein <laughs> no on. yeah the collins got it <laughs> um, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get there this yeah. is our, and this is our and or reviews all over again by the way yeah, i don't I was think we could say, remember a single name speaking of which a great segue i thought that mando took a page out of Andor here uh yeah didn't work out like Andor did but it's okay yeah they tried yeah. john favreau attempted to write just like Andor, but it's okay yeah, it, it didn't work out all that all that much but it's fine um uh, but yeah the, the dr person stuff <laughs> what happened I just said John Faber attempted to run. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so the officer name is Elia Kane. There uh, we go. Which, Kane. Which, Kane. Which, Kane. which this was the first um episode where we actually got her name because we did not yes. get her uh, her name in season two, Amanda. I, yeah. I love that she was such a background character and then she's kind yeah. of like they just she's just fully brought to the forefront, like out of nowhere. And they, yeah. they literally showed like I'm sure she was in more than that one scene that they showed in the recap, but I was like that's pretty much all I remember her from. I don't know. It's just a cool Star Wars thing. Do you did you ever hear the theory like of of when she had her appearance in Mando that people thought that she no. was Sabine, like un, like no. she was Sabine undercover? I did not hear that. Yeah, <laughs> man. I kept you hearing be on that, some and weird I'm like, forums to say that. Don't you? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, man. what forums are you reading, Colin? <laughs> That was like all over Instagram. <laughs> really? Like oh on yeah, of, of just one day. I, I just keep seeing articles. I'm like, there's no way. There's that's no wild. way th- th- that that's Sabine. The, I've never the, heard the that only theory. person that I didn't see say that was Mike. And I'm glad because <laughs> that's how I knew it wasn't true. Well, like well, like novels. mainly because I was like, if someone's gonna know, it's gonna be Mike. But yeah, no. So yeah, no, I, I uh um I thought her character was great in this episode. She was definitely um I could tell that she was undercover, like she was deceiving him because, you know, she was like Moff Gideon's like kind of right Pat- hand, in my opinion, like yeah, right. kind of in the okay. shadows, yeah. like not saying anything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Mike, any any other final overall thoughts? No, what are your overall thoughts? I want to hear them. Man, I, I feel so... I don't know. I'm just I'm not vibing with Mando season three. I, I love the first two season, seasons, and I just think season three has just failed to capture the magic that was those two seasons. I think it does hit on certain levels, but I think there's three things that I, I wrote down in my head last night. I'm forgetting one of them, but the writing of the actual dialogue in this show is just not good. It's In my opinion, it's, it's almost cringeworthy at times. Like, I think there was a moment where uh bo was like oh these mud scuffers have got to get off my back or something and i was just cringing so hard it reminded me of um Cara Cara Dune Dune. in in, <laughs> in, yeah, the, in the finale i was like god these anyway so scuffers. on that sense i really feel like the show is being let down a bit i think john favreau could maybe use john for and dave filoni could use like some other writers in that room instead of and, and i think this episode was actually written by two people surprisingly so maybe that's not all to blame on john favreau i think visually the show is still just not what what it was in my opinion i don't know if production was rushed or, or what it was um but since, since kenobi i just and maybe it's just because we're all way too aware of the volume um i don't know but yeah, I said there was three things. I've forgotten the other. But overall, the, sh- the show, it just feels okay to me. It's just all right. This this particular episode, I had fun with it. Um, it I, I love when, when you know, you click on Disney Plus and you see that there's a long episode, like with Andor, you 
toward yeah. the end of the series. There were some huge episodes, which w- was great. And this one, I was excited, but I really feel like it could have been shorter, to be honest. Um, there was just, I, I don't know. I, 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 it's, hard, it's hard to explain, but overall, I just felt mildly entertained and that was about it. And, and I think I hold Mandalorian to just a higher standard because of how good the first two seasons were. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the first sequence was, was cool. Everything with Pershing was was interesting without being. I think I agree with Mike's analogy, uh, kind of where, where like, yeah, it was it was good, but almost it didn't have that the flavor that I wanted. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. but on the surface, it, it looked good. I guess um, it, it was very good to see Coruscant back, and especially the Opera House. Um, I and freaked the- out during that scene, man. Like as soon as <laughs> I saw that pop on screen, I was like, "Let's go, Darth yeah. Plagueis the Wise." So, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I. Yeah. Um, to add to kind of what you're saying just real quick, because I was sure. just thinking about this, is I think something that throws me off um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, like about this whole season so far is that it's not Ludwig doing the music. Right. Yeah. That's really throwing me off. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I mentioned in a previous podcast that I feel like um, the music in this se- se- particular season has – almost felt like it was just copy and pasting from the first two seasons. Yeah. And it, it felt a bit clunky and didn't feel overly original, even though, you know, of course I love hearing bo theme and, and, you know, the classic Mandalorian themes and all that sort of stuff. But I, I agree with you. I think the music has been lacking. Um, but yeah. And then I think the final thing is I still just feel the same way I felt uh, with, I think it was last episode I said this, but the pacing of the show just doesn't work for me because I think, since the the end of season two, they've just been trying to get somewhere so quickly for some reason. But now I'm starting to think like, is there even a reason or are they just moving way too quickly? And and that that is um goes back to the book of Boba, how how rushed the whole Grogu transition was and everything. Like mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I'm just lukewarm on it. I'm I'm certainly not hating it. I, I just think it's it's a shrug of the shoulders so far. Yeah. But I'm still giving it a chance every week and I'm excited to watch. So um, but yeah, let's let's sort of dive further into the episode and start where we picked off um, up with at the end of last episode. Uh, Colin, what did you think of everything we got to see with Bo and Din? Um, you know, they got away from the Mythosaur uh, and then uh, they get chased by the Interceptors. Where did they come from? Bo-Katan's home is destroyed, so she can't sit on her throne anymore. But yeah, what did you think of all that? Okay, I will say one, well, three words. Ty... Yeah, no, two. Sorry. Tie Interceptor. I loved <laughs> that we got them back into live action because we haven't seen them live action since Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So seeing them back in action, having their, you know, shields and everything more difficult to take down than than Tie Fighter was great. And it was given our heroes more of a challenge. Um, I thought everything was awesome. I think I think Din jumping out of the ship full speed was fantastic mm-hmm. and and, and cool. the part where like she she also kind of had to like drift like in the water too and kind of turned backwards was great and then the yeah. where din Djarin had like the batman moment where like he goes up and then he comes back down was awesome so they are they're doing great in in that department of of, of action and i just love anything with the Naboo Starfighter because it's such a beautiful ship and I loved I was one of those kids that that grew up on 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 the prequels a lot which I'm sure that we probably all were but I I I really really enjoyed um seeing the ship return in Book of Boba Fett so to see it more in in action in in the show is just phenomenal to me yeah yeah sure Mike what did you think of all that all the action Action, stuff action was amazing look I've complained yeah. about Bad Batch and how the action just snoozes the hell out of me. <laughs> like, I am bored yeah. with the action. Bad really? Batch action, yes, because Bad Batch action, 90, 80% of the time, 85% of the time, is action without purpose. And that just drives me nuts because it's like literally the bad. Yeah. This isn't a Bad Batch podcast, so we won't get into it. Here, <laughs> but Well, I prefer just... talking about Bad Batch this week, I want to be yeah. honest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh anyways but the, the bad bad stuff like action just bores me there's too many characters there's too many players in the scene i just get really? mixed up and i get bored with it that's just my honest like however okay. 
when it's here with Mandalorian, when they have action with purpose and everything, and the way, Colin, the way you were describing the whole action sequence, 100% yes. Like, there was so much thought that was gone into this, and and I love that, like, again, I think in Rebels, like, the, they would have been able to blow up the TIE Fighters just easily or in Clone Wars, but they had, like, this whole thing where you had Mandel sitting at the turf for a little bit, and then he's like, wait, I could go to my fighter, and the host, that whole, like, switch off was just great um and i actually thought grogu was gonna jump too because he went into the he put the cover on and i thought that was hilarious but that was just great and the r5 stuff when bo was going into the uh into the canyon was that what you would call it a canyon bo was like um oh it's all right like i i would drift through these when i was a kid and then the droid like was like okay vibing with it and then she's like but it's been a while and he just starts yeah. backing up. It's <laughs> so funny. I just, there's so much care that goes in, in, into some of these things and I love it. Um, So I love the humor out of that. And TIE Interceptors, great. The revelation, I was like, okay, great. I thought it was going to take the Rebels approach where Rebels just bugs me sometimes because it is just, it feels lazy um, writing at times. Like there was this time where Saul Guerrera is uh, like Sabine and Ezra are aboard Saul's ship his Ewing, and then like, oh no, Hera, we can't. This took me time for. I was like, yeah, we all saw that coming, dude. Be careful, like, it's man. All good. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. So, fi- I don't want to fight on this podcast. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, I, was, uh, okay. Rebels. Well, you you do realize that Star Wars Rebels did start off like more of more pointed towards like the the like the younger audience. Of course, no, of course, like, yes. Well, man, yeah, man, my. Both yes. our favorite seasons of the show is season one. Season one, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I love. I by the way, I love Rebels. I'm not a yeah. Rebels hater or whatever. I'm yeah. just saying. So, and here, <laughs> and here, um, you actually have. I'm like, oh, they're they're gonna do this Solger thing where it's like, oh, the Grogu and R5 are on on both ship, and then they're gonna go their separate ways because there's too many fighters. But then I love that they ended up going to uh, Navarro together. So that was a surprise for me. And um, the revelation of Bo's um, home being destroyed, that was great. Like, Bo, okay, um, Din was like, wait, I'm picking up something on my scanner. And you see, like, like three ships, and they're moving. The camera pans up, and then you just see, like, small destructions happening. And then you just see all the bombers taking out the her fortress or her castle. Even and that the, was just the shot great. where, like, all the bombers came into, like, the scope on yep. his N1. That was, that was, yeah. that was, that yeah. was great. And the N1 action amazing and i really yeah. thought they were gonna sit here and t- pick off all those tie fighters but they didn't and they ran and i love that and um where those tie great. fighters come from moff gideon yeah thrawn I know. thrawn was my first thought just because there were so okay. many so christopher lloyd has been cast but we don't oh, know right. who. and that's and right. she and 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 bogatan did say you know i i did kind of upset a couple of different M- imperial warlords how cool would it be if christopher lloyd true. was one of those warlords? that would be cool H- however though Dean did true. say seems like a lot of ships for a warlord or something like that pointing away right. from that direction but that could be a misdirect yep um and then some people are saying that it could be thrown but i'm like there's no way that 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 they would bring them in that early and if they did maybe they would do the season finale and then that would lead into ahsoka maybe yeah it, it would it would seem like a strange way to just randomly bring him in. It's like, yeah. you know what I'm going to do today? Thrawn just goes, yeah, I'm just going to go <laughs> bomb Satine's home. Uh, not Satine, right. Bo-Katan's yep. home. It mm-hmm. seems really odd that that's just, how he would be brought in. But right. I, I can't think of anyone else. So, so the, But the then they were hinting that Gideon could have escaped. So yeah. Right. And yeah. honestly, the, the, the main reason why I, I think it is Gideon is because you have to think about how embarrassing it was for him to get defeated at the oh, end yeah. of season two and yeah. you and you also see the actor who, who um uh who who plays moff gideon mm. has been saying in interviews i don't want grogu around anymore i want to kill him like he yeah. does not want that baby around and that's a big hint that he's out for revenge so i think honestly he's just going on a re- revenge run right now because if he True. did escape He's probably going after the yeah. people that put but, him there in the first place. And that would be a really interesting just plot point of him escaping and the New Republic trying to cover it up. Yeah. I think that would be cool. And that that seems like something that the, the writers of this show would do where just like they skip over a massive beat of the story, him escaping, just being like, oh, yeah, he's escaped. Like, right. So yeah. I can totally see them doing that. I'll, I'll just say, 
I just got to point this out because if Din, if Bo didn't put away her like being emo, you know, little <laughs> moment there, she would have gotten killed. She would have been sitting in her castle and she would have been bombed. She true, got up yeah, because true. of Din. So yeah, that's crazy. That is very yes. true. Um, yeah, I I didn't I don't have much to add. Um, the only thing I could think of was I I just think it's interesting that Bo-Katan's hiding the whole Mythosaur thing for herself. Um, right, I don't know yeah. what that's what that's pointing towards. I maybe she thinks that um, well the Darks I don't want to kill Din, so I'm never going to get the Dark Saber the way that I want. Uh, therefore, maybe another way I could unite my people is ride the Mythosaur or something like that. That's the only thing I can think of. Do well, either of you have any theories? Okay, so if you think about it, so Din won the saber to Moff Gideon, and then Din lost it to the alien cyborg creature thing, and then <laughs> yeah. and then Bo-Katan defeated the creature, so she technically wins the dark saber. So does that mean that she's the, you know, the? I mean, it's it it's it, it's a really crappy theory. But I, mean, I, you never I know. was thinking about that. Yeah, I can see John Favreau writing that for sure. Yeah, like, well, I actually, mean, and then we have a flashback to the cyborg guy. <laughs> oh well, oh, that, well, 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 that just reminds me of of Harry Potter, of where it's like if you disarm the person holding the wand, it's like okay, you are no longer the like if if you end up getting disarmed, you know, in Harry Potter and then that person disarms you that person is now the owner of your want so it's like if, if oh yeah if, i heard about that i heard about that i'm not familiar with harry potter but oh, oh i'm oh, sure okay. our harry potter well, yeah, harry potter listeners will, will know. <laughs> potter heads, yeah, potter know what, heads. You're, what you're on about yeah right. so um, uh yeah no um i don't know why she she should be hiding it i don't know what game she's playing at but i'm with you just like i, like, I think why? she was just shocked i think they showed us at yeah. the end of the i'll just say this before we move on at the end of the other episode she was like making fun of yeah i sat here and didn't take anything seriously with my father and then the fact that she saw it, she was just so spooked i think that she was like yeah let's just move yeah. on like did you see anything that, yeah no? that, that's, okay, a, great. that's a good thought because maybe it was like a moment of realization for her where yeah you know while, while the creed are extremists and a lot of what they do is outdated it it she's taking the complete opposite stance of everything they say is is bull crap and whereas she is like now she's starting to realize okay maybe there's a healthy balance where that some of the stuff right. they're saying is still valid but obviously you don't want to go as far but she's in the creed now so so who the hell knows right um also it's <laughs> this is just a random thought but it seems real easy to just go bathe in the waters i don't know like it's like, oh, you could just not wear your helmet for 50 years and then go, oh, I want to go in the creed. And then you can just go jump in the water, jump out, go to the armor and say, all right, I did it. Here's some water. Religion, right. like, religion Religions are a crazy thing. They, well, you, I you, wouldn't consider I was them Catholic. really look, bathing. Look, I was <laughs> okay, Catholic okay. and you could have, um, uh, you could create sins and do whatever. And then all you had to do was at confession, you just go up and you would have this moment with a priest and confess your sins and then you you start off on a clean slate so i could totally see that this is like that same type of um you know th that same type of um practice where it's just like yeah. you betrayed you, go redeem yourself and that's basically what confession is you would go to a priest yeah. confess your sins yeah. and then it's like okay you're absolved pray Makes you're sense. good yeah I, so good insight because i i'm not religious at all so i'm completely unfamiliar but me and mike did have a, a good talk about religion after last week's episode and yeah. obviously the, the themes of this show yeah with parks the themes of this show are, is, there's so much about religion in here yep. so um yeah actually that's that's just i took that from a stupid thing and you turned it into a valid thing so <laughs> nice. i will say though i think saying them bathing in the waters is a very loose term because mando yeah. just walked a couple of steps and fell all the way i down. know yeah. exactly and uh and Bogotan didn't take the creed. She just dived in. So she just jumped in. Yeah. That, that's like... the other thing. We talked about this in the last episode where it, the episode started to go a bit off the rails at this point. But I was saying that I, I was spooked for a moment because I thought Din was going to like fully undress and, and walk in. But oh, he just like right. took his jetpack off and like took a few steps in. I was like, all right. Yeah. I guess if, that's if what we're doing. Right. But if we're getting like into insight and stuff, I mean, think about Ventress when she was baptized and reborn again. Oh, with. Yeah. Mm -hmm true true oh no oh we lost mike but mike, it was a no. good point about ventress <laughs> mike loves ventress um 
Yeah, so I think that's pretty much everything I have to say. Do, do you have anything else to add before we talk about the Coruscant stuff, Colin? Uh, um, no, no, no. I mean, like I, I again, I loved that that we got all of um that we got that all covered within like the first like 10, 10, 10 to fifteen minutes. Yeah, and it was pretty much then exactly it just jumps to the next yeah. episode. So it, it wasn't yeah. drawn out and I and I was hoping we would see them at the store, but we didn't. Yeah. Hopefully Me we too, see but now, it, I season. think it makes sense for them to save that for later. I think yeah. it's a good it's a good setup and now when it comes in to play later. Hopefully, oh, I mean, I don't know cuz it's kind of a tricky one, but I hope they don't do what Boba Fett did with the Rancor where it's like, look, a Rancor and then the finale it's like, remember the Rancor, oh, you know what I mean? Oh, I hope they don't do that because yeah. I was like, where was the training episode of where yeah, Boba yeah, was yeah, learning yeah, to yeah, ride yeah. it? I wanted to learn more about Rancors. Like, what's up with that? Yeah, for real. I wouldn't for get real. any of it. And I was so disappointed. He just showed up and was like, "All right, go and eat them." And I'm like, "No, yeah. where's the training <laughs> montage? What's going yeah. on?" I'm with yeah. you. Um, Mike, looks like it. we've got you back. Uh, let's talk about the next portion of this episode because uh, Mando fully know uh, got put put Boba Fett's shoes on for this episode because he knows exactly how it feels to have an episode be completely taken away from you. Not completely, but almost. Um, so we open up on Coruscant oh, yeah. and we're in the um, the Opera House where you know Darth Plagueis, the Wise, all that. We're with Pershing. He's giving some insights into cloning. What did you think of the? I mean, just the whole introduction to Coruscant we're back in Coruscant we get the opera house Pershing's back the cloning stuff what do you think of all that Mike it was it was great I it was I saw in the description we're headed to Coruscant but of the of the episode on Disney plus but mm. once we went back and it just started with this joyous music it just felt great because for a while it felt like we were avoiding the prequels and and it felt like Disney was avoiding the prequels and any prequel content and obviously that it's, that. that's not true anymore because they realized there's money to be made there Disney uh but I think that when we went to Coruscant, I was like, oh my God, like, it's just so great to be here. Coruscant has never looked better at this point. It didn't, um, but it just never looked better. Um, it looked amazing. It reminded me of the way uh, Bad Batch covered Coruscant and how great it looked at night. Um, and yeah, I just, I just fell in love all over again with Coruscant. And I love that, you know, yeah, in the prequels, we went to like all these like pivotal places, but like, it felt like here we were just getting, we were just getting down into the city vibe, even talking to locals there and all these politicians and stuff. So I absolutely loved all that. It felt like we were into it. Other, you know, I feel like the prequels kind of skimmed over some things, but obviously with Clone Wars, we've been able to like live the city life in Coruscant, but I felt man Lauren was like dabbling with that with, you know, later on in the episode, they did things where I'm like, yeah, explore Coruscant. But the opening scene was great. Um, Dr. Pershing talking there was amazing. Um, I thought we were going to get, it's cool that they just turned the, the opera house into like a little conference room about a someone who is on the amnesty program and i thought that was great and him yeah he was fully he, giving a ted talk he was he was giving a <laughs> ted talk and i absolutely yeah. love that there was, was this mo- it was just, yeah and there's just <laughs> this was moment bummed. that no more that, floating bubbles oh i know right i know <laughs> right? i'm getting sw- yeah. swimming in that but i mean that that is a historical <laughs> monument that is where one of the first like prequel memes came from and they just twisted it and turned it into a conference room and i'm like they they did they they did it was a political summit there of war and criminals but um (laughs) yeah i i'm telling you it it was just there's this this moment where pershing was alluding to something else like having a clone body and then uh no wait that was later a, a little bit later but the point is like i it was just so surreal and it didn't feel like the mandalorian which was great like it just felt like um, it felt something that we would see in Andor, and he was just up there, and we were getting hologram images of of the cloning DNA and stuff. And I'm like, is Star Wars really talking about this again? Are we doing this in live action too? Not even Bad Batch or Clone Wars. We're doing this in live action. This is great. Um, so yeah, I, I love when Star Wars isn't afraid to get science fictiony because that's yeah. that's the genre it dabbles in. Even though it's like sci fi fantasy, yeah. it's like you come, you're going back to your kind of like the roots that it felt like we're like prequel cool content that we were getting like prequel cool yeah. stories and i love that it that felt they did that. super sci-fi super you know sci-fi. It, I, it reminded that's... me of this of this science fiction movie i i really like called gattaca i don't know if anyone's familiar with that but that that was if anyone's watched that movie that was exactly what i was thinking of anyway, uh, wait 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 it's a it's called what gattaca gattaca who gattaca 
Gattaca. I don't know who the director or the writer is, but it's okay. it, real quick, 10 second summary. It's about this guy who he's living in like a futuristic world and he has to like use all his brothers or this random person's DNA because when you're born, your genetics are scanned. And if your life expectancy isn't like long, then they'll make you be like a janitor. But if you have like oh, okay. long life expectancy, you can be a scientist or whatever. And so oh, anyway, okay. it's a good movie. Go watch it. Battle, <laughs> Battlestar Galactica? No, no, no. <laughs> definitely not. There's um, beat. But yeah, no, Mike, yeah, it, it's a good point. And, and I like what you said about the joyous music of like returning to Coruscant because that that was a, a vibe that those like 10, 15 seconds. That was that was a major vibe. And I got to say, I love Andor, but I, one of my biggest gripes with that show is is the way Coruscant looked in it. And I so I loved seeing it kind of go back to how it looks like in when we first saw it in uh, not first saw it, but when we saw it in Attack of the Clones. Yeah. Um so yeah, and and uh, I just think, yeah, John Favreau is really taking a book out of t- a leaf out of Tony Gilroy's book with uh, the discussion with the the rich being unaffected by what's going on in the galaxy. Um, we see that guy saying, "Oh, New Republic Empire." I yep. forget sometimes because what does it matter or something something like that. So um, it's cool to see the shows kind of connect like that thematically because they are in the same universe after all. Um, but yeah, what did what did you think of that this whole section, Colin? I loved everything in Coruscant. I loved them going to the carnival and learning more about, mm. uh, like, about us, the audience, learn more about the lore of the planet. I th- I think we did. We did, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but have we heard about that mountain before in the High Republic, or no? Which okay. one? Were they talking we, about? It, it was oh. in Light of the Jedi. That's okay, right. cool. That's right. Cool. So yeah, yeah. I. I loved seeing that and uh, and the fact that Dr. Pershing, to me, it kind of felt like he was a kid just kind of relearning things of just kind of being mm. like a normal person. So I, I thought that was cool. In that scene, though, really, th- like, I was really surprised. But in the background, if you listen to it, you can hear the resistance theme uh, yep. in yep. in the background. Now, I... I hear that song a lot, so 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 that sound like you know caught me by surprise, and I caught up on it right away. But I was thinking, was there like a resistance, or technically it would be a new republic, uh, like recruiting like area, and they were trying to do the same thing that the Empire did? Because if you remember in Solo, they mm-hmm. they like had the Imperial recruitment yeah, yeah, booth, yeah. and they were using the actual Imperial. Yeah, you know, it was the song. first time we heard that in the universe. Right. Yeah. So I I'm think, thinking maybe they did that. I think it was a because it, it kind of sounded like a carnival twist to it. Like a, if you were hearing at a carnival. Yeah, so it that's seemed so like weird. It, it, that's so it, weird. I, I mean, it was it was if they were playing the anthem to everybody, like the way they played, you know, the Imperial March. But I don't think it was it was propaganda, but it was just like propaganda and celebration of, you know, uh, yeah. the other stuff was recruitment stuff. This yeah. was just like. Yay, we did it because everything to on Coruscant was just like, yeah. yay, we're post war, we're okay. we're yeah. in a we're in a thriving new republic. Join us right. on our new quest to make. It wasn't as weird. The... It no. wasn't as weird as those popsicles they they had or whatever. Those <laughs> yeah. were weird. Seriously, yeah. what was the deal with that? <laughs> uh, but yeah, but I think the music was just supposed to be like a, a joyous, adding to the okay. joyous theme that like, look, we're post war. Are you hel- are you being are you helping the new republic be? better like be part of our new quest you know it's like that type of stuff like join us i don't know it's still propaganda but it's just different type it's not recruitment yeah i will say something else which we didn't have a very like a long discussion about it and we don't and we probably don't have enough time for it but how did you feel not seeing the jedi temple um on course on here because in legends it was turned into the imperial palace but it's not very clear if they turn if the if the jedi temple was just abandoned or or anything like that because the uh the the version of disney plus of you see of return of the jedi when like all the planets are celebrating and then you see like the like they go in coruscant and the stormtroopers getting um he's crowd surfing and they knock over the palpatine statue you do Mm -hmm. see the uh you do see the temple right in the background right now is that the imperial palace or is that just abandoned no and so in in comics even yeah. in the charles soul com wait no not even it was in the 2015 vader series 
um, it was turned into it was the Imperial Palace, which is canon, supposedly. Um, okay. It came out in 2016, 15, 20, 15, 15, 15, yeah, 2015, yeah. the first Vader series. Okay. So they, it's actually it, Imperial Palace, and you read about the Imperial Palace a lot in Lost Stars, the Thrawn series. Okay, good. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. there's there's multiple books that cover it, though, but I wasn't expecting to see it. I think I would have been like, kind of like, great, we, we've seen it. I want to focus yeah. on Dr. Pershing and everything. Right. That's just, you know. Yeah, I, for, yeah, for me, I agree with you. It wasn't very relevant to what we were seeing. Well, yeah. I would have yeah. loved to seen it, though. I mean, like, yeah. in a different... If we were doing other stuff, like, I thought we are going to see Coruscant because Din was going to um, Coruscant. Right. And yeah. I, I'm like, he's got to go to the Jedi Temple. Like, that's just what I want to see with Grogu. But different, you know, if maybe maybe they'll we'll be able to see the Jedi Temple sooner rather than later. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I was not expecting it to play a big part but that's just something that's always in the back of my head because yeah fair enough because we haven't really you know seen anything after sure. you know re yeah, yeah, trying yeah, the jedi yeah. about it and the only reminiscent that we got ever it's in legends now but was in the force unleashed of where star yeah. killer goes back and do all those missions in there so i would just like to see something with it and i mike i love your theory of where grogu and mando would go there and then he would have a flashback there. I think that would be cool. I think everyone would be freaking out during that episode. So now that I'm hoping that happens. Cool. <laughs> and if it doesn't, you know, I, I blame forget, you. <laughs> I forget that we saw in the trailer that we're gonna that flashback is gonna be finished. Yep. So who knows when that? I mean, sounds sounds like Ahsoka is gonna be in next week. So I think next week is yes. a pretty safe bet for, for when that's gonna happen. Shout out to Rosario Dawson for spoiling that. Yes, I <laughs> yeah because I saw her post that and I just posted to the group chat i have with our podcast people i'm like she just pretty much spoiled that and i don't think she was supposed to but yeah that's not the first time <laughs> she's, she's, done done, that. she's done that a few times now <laughs> yeah she has yeah um yeah. real quick i just want to touch on the like almost the ex imperial camp i don't know what was going on there but i thought that was cool like i guess it showed that i, I mean i think it just showed that while the new republic is lacking it is better than the empire because mm -hmm um we see in bad batch how the empire is treating the right. remnants of the republic and now we're yes. seeing how the new republic is treating the remnants of the empire and it's a lot better at least that's what we are led to to believe michael do you have any thoughts on it i just thought it was really cool to see all that i mean i um it reminds me of i don't i'm not sure what the term is called but it, it reminds me of the way americans treated x um or like war criminals from yep. the world war ii era with with nazis and everything and they would hire they would get uh nazi scientists working on on our own military space stuff so it's just like i was very interested with the pershing aspect because i'm like they should be like protecting this man at all costs like when someone rang his doorbell i'm like don't answer it. Like, I feel like he's yeah. wanted right now on both <laughs> sides. I feel like he should yeah. be under heavy guard. It's like having like an Einstein on your side. It's like you need to guard him at all costs. So yeah. that was just my only thought. I thought it was it was cool, but it was definitely like, hey, we're not the Empire, but you're, you're still going to yeah, be in prison. You know? It's super unusual because like they're making him like be known to the galaxy. He's had, holding these big conferences. Right. But then like yeah you're they're just kind of putting you him should, in a you in should a read pocket. everyone should read here alphabet squadron at mm. victory uh victory's price they start yeah. mon mothma's in there she starts talking about criminals and what should happen to them imperial criminals and what should happen to them after the war harrison doula yeah. has an opinion on it very good story you should read it everybody sure. <laughs> in, in that story correct me if i'm wrong but uh isn't embo like the like the bounty hunter from the clone wars isn't he Aftermath. like her bodyguard yeah okay i would say he's her bodyguard in that right something like that yeah I, i've it's okay. been a while since i read aftermath but yeah something like that in the aftermath yeah. series That's cool. yeah for sure um and then so, sort of moving on with the episode we get to a point where we see um uh pershing is working in a place that looks very similar to what um cyril khan was in Andor, mm -hmm, but yeah. uh and and we sort of get to see that the New Republic is just lacking like common sense in terms of like they just want to destroy all the Imperial stuff. They want to have one of the smartest people in the galaxy working at I don't even know what the job he was doing, like inventory or something. Um, yeah, so we get to sort of see that this government is trying to get itself organized, but in the do in doing so, it's like 
being very like inefficient with everything that it does. And um, while it's better than the Empire, there's still they're sort of papering over the cracks a little bit. Um, and then yeah, we we get to the point where we see that there's a friendship kind of blossoming between Pershing and uh, I've already forgotten the name, but but you you guys know who we're talking Kane. about. <laughs> the, the, that's the one. That's the Kane. one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then yeah, we have this weird sort of train sequence, and they they get off, they get captured, but then we find out that Kane double crossed, and Pershing is arrested, and some weird experiment goes down. <laughs> I don't know. There was a lot going on here, Colin. What do you think? I thought the part of where where they were trying to convince him it's it's not a mind flare and then he looks which i don't know why like they were trying to do this but it was like an on point easter egg it was like okay like we understand but he looks directly at the mon calamari and set and and says it's a trap and i'm like oh okay that was so cringe yeah that was yeah so cringe. yeah I, I i i was like really i was like i i get that it's the 40th year anniversary of return of the jedi but <laughs> There's, I mean, like it's it's right on God, the nose. I hated that. Like, I, I, hated we... that. I actually forgot that that even happened because I think I've compartmentalized <laughs> it a little bit. But God, that was awful. I, I can't even remember if this was in Mando. Or, oh no, it was in Book of Boba when Boba says to the Rancor, "Do it," and oh. then he he like oh, that was horrible too. God, please, someone <laughs> just like can we can we probe these scripts before they're they're approved because no. god that's some awful i'm telling you right it, now nothing will be as cringe as poe looking kylo ren directly in the face and force awakens long pause and says do you talk first i talk first you no talk first. that was great I actually, I actually no, found that, that was funny yeah. that, that was, was great. cringe that was no, cringe that bro. was great that was not Oscar good. Isaac's performance, and that was great. Yeah, he was oh. like, "You talk about I thought that was great." Mike on this one. <laughs> Sorry, Colin. I know you're a guest, but you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Fine. But that no, because I just remember sitting in the theater and listening to that, and I was like, "Okay." No. What's cringe is Cara Dune and, and the siege going like, "What is going on back there?" Oh my god! Don't remind <laughs> me of, of any anything about Cara Dune. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. this the the sequence least favorite part of my episode the train stuff it just I felt we we're talking earlier about montages about the rank arm like training montage I wish they yeah. just had a montage of la 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 here's uh Dr. Pershing and uh Kane just having ice cream having this having that yeah. oh look we're juggling now oh we're writing Yeah cuz it was a bit clunky yeah. it was it was very clunky awkward yeah. weird oh, when the really when he funny. touches the mountain it was just like this weird or the mountains peak and she's like ha 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 i was like that was the fakest oh, laugh i've ever seen that, that was, was odd it was weird yeah and it had nothing to do with her acting i just think the script was really clunky especially the train yeah. stuff okay. i was like what is, oh sorry i was like what is going on well oh, so okay i can kind of no it's not that i'm defending but you're the, defending um, of, of that part but <laughs> You you have to remember she's undercover. She's being fake. Um, 100%. Well, that, right, 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 right. And okay. that's uh, why that's, that's why it's that's what I was telling my friends yesterday. I'm like, while it's clunky and stuff, I feel like that's all that's part of her character because she has to be playing, you know, that card. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I agree with and, that. I just wish it was just like I said, it's not her acting. I think it's it's because of the way it's written like that, but it still comes yeah, comes across clunky it's like that. Um, and, and I think a lot of issues, just to clarify what I was saying earlier about acting, a lot of those issues with the acting can come back to to the script, kind of clunky dialogue. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And and I really thought I'll, I just wanted to train. Uh, sorry, a montage of just like let's just get to the point where we get to the lab already because it was killing so much time. Yeah. And yeah. and when they finally get there, it was just like she was just kind of like looking around, like yeah. You look around. I'll, I'll watch your back. I don't know. This is weird. Um, yeah. And I thought she, I literally thought she was leading him to Moff Gideon. I thought Moff Gideon was going to come out. Some was hiding in the yeah. Star Destroyer. I thought that yeah. was going to happen. But it was weird. I wish we got more. Like uh, I like it when when creatives leave it to us to kind of fill in the blanks. Like we're not stupid. But I have a lot of questions into why they didn't arrest her. Was it just like I don't? We can sit here and theorize, but that's not really important. I'm just like. I just want a bit more clarity on that stuff. However, I think what what she was trying to say was, "Oh, I I 
followed Dr. Pershing to the labs, yeah. I, I think he's breaking into the Star Destroyers and then she's given them a okay. call. And, they, the and just, I know the New Republic's not great or whatever, but it's better than the Empire. But mm. this the stupidity from the officers and well dr pershing was there and he's like wait let me let me explain i was like oh my god let him you guys are just not gonna even hear him out yeah like he, and then as well just... letting letting an imperial officer yes sit in the room with him oh my god right. the stupidity yeah. exactly i don't yeah. it's just it's i guess they're written it, it was written like that to make us be like oh you guys are so stupid but still i was just like yeah. Come on, there was just so many blanks there that I was like, uh, like kind of eye roll moments, you know. But I still thought that um, it was it was very interesting, and I think what you said about having other writers, like I think John Favreau, it's like John Favreau, you're you're damn brilliant. You're coming up with all these things. You have the officer now trying to wipe um, uh, the doctor's mind from any any knowledge that he has because he was going to help out the new Republic either way. He was just going to get to that point. And I love that. She just like, was like, no, we're going to, my, you know, we're going to fry your brain. And yeah. I love that. But it's just like, sometimes I feel like there could be better execution. So if you had exactly, other people in the kitchen exactly. cooking, oh, yeah, all the big ideas are cool, but it's the way we're getting there. It's just right. 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 It's, yeah. You know, but still, I still had a good time with it. Um, I was still enjoying the start, the star destroyer stuff and all that. But yeah. Yeah. Let's, um, oh, Colin, do you have a thought? Well, I just thought it was funny about the whole segue of, of just going to Mando to this, and then they end it like they end it going back to Mando's story. I wasn't expecting them to have like that giant, like, kind of gap because Disconnect. it just felt separate in a way, and it just kind of yeah. felt it was okay. So when they canceled the Rangers of the New Republic. I, it, to me, this episode felt like it was maybe an episode that belonged to that. Like some of the writing felt like it belonged to what the Rangers of the New Republic was going to be. So I just after oh, watching wait. it, mm -hmm. what? Oh, well, With yeah. the amnesty stuff. I think that was yeah. supposed to be in there. Yeah. 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 And it, it, it was just really, really weird. So I just remember getting done like with the episode and just sitting there and being like, did they just kind of take some of the writing that was, you know, probably going to go towards Rangers of the New Republic? Well, I'm pretty sure Kathleen Kennedy said they were going to do that. It was yeah. someone, someone, I remember making a post maybe like a year ago where someone said, oh, the good thing about the Mandoverse is, is a lot of those ideas we can, we can put in the Mandalorian because it's all connected. And I remember okay. reading that going, huh. That makes more sense. Yeah. Like, because yeah. I definitely um, got that vibe. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's talk about the final section of the episode, though, because Din is back. He proved himself. I thought the armor I wasn't going to let him back in, but she was like, yes, this this is the waters. Correct. Welcome back. bo -Katan, you can join us as well. What do we think of that, Colin? That's weird for her because that's the that's like the clan that killed her sister. And then can we also talk about how... Uh, how she was a uh, part of that clan once, though, before yes but yeah. she left because of that though um uh because I think she of mall because like mall yeah took over. right right because she was still there when oh wait no mall wait I, i'm she, I forgetting the timeline of that she left before she left before um mall killed her sister right because she saved them from prison she right. she helped obi-wan yep. that's save, right no, no, or yeah. she yeah. saved yeah. her sister right. yeah, yeah yeah but the I other weird thing Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I just want to say, like, there's still. I just want to put this out that even to the audience, we don't know why there are Death Watch insignias on those on on the guys that saved Din from yeah. from the flashbacks in, in season one. We don't know where the maybe those were people that had just left Death Watch to go back to the Mandalorian way yeah. because pre Vizsla's agenda was to go back to that uh to that Mandalorian way, but in terms of yeah. armor and fighting and satin wanted the more pacifist way and children of the watch is 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 like the death watch but they're more founded in in non-violence and just protecting their own visa was an, ex, an extremist in in the violence but we don't yeah. know maybe those people were leaving because they were fighting separatist droids yeah. like could it have been after dooku's um dooku's deal gone bad with pre visla and some of those soldiers were were leaving visla and they were joining the watch we don't know but the way yeah. I'm seeing it, the way it's playing out right now, it's Death Watch, 
Children of the Watch, and then um, uh, the other Satine's Pacifist Mandalorians. Okay. At least in Clone Wars. Also, real quick, on Bo-Katan, I don't think this is going to happen, but like uh, people are saying, oh, she's joining the Watch, she's joining the Watch. Well, for all we know, Episode 4 could start with Bo-Katan taking her helmet off and saying, F this. You know what I mean? Like She didn't say anything at the end of the episode. She didn't do a creed. I thought it was more than that. I thought she had to say the creed. Unless you yeah. right, right. So th- 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 that's like, what we I'm don't know how Bo-Katan before. feels yet. Yeah, right. She doesn't uh, have much of a choice. Kinda, well, she yeah. did just experience a lot, like within right. the past couple of days, because of she, she went back to her home planet that she hasn't been on in a very long time, and she walks through, and then she sees a mythosaur, right, and then she goes back to her castle. It gets blown up, right. and then she yeah. comes in and this is something that i want to talk about real quick which is we haven't seen someone from clan Krees and Vizla in the same yep. room together yep. in same a long problem. time yeah yep. so i was that was the main thing that popped in my head i was like well that's gonna be awkward yep. uh, yeah and the way yeah. paz was looking at her too i was like "Ooh, something's going yeah. on here it was very um, spicy it was very not, spicy. In, not in a horny way <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm trying to think if they say that word in Star Wars or we have to bleep it out. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, um, nah, but <laughs> when we say horny, we, we're talking about like horns on an animal, you know, it's, it's yeah, that exactly. type. Yeah. Exactly. Um, wow. But oh, okay. This, yeah. this episode. This You've never heard of that, Colin? <laughs> you can just cut this out if you want. The, you the, know, mythosaur, <laughs> the mythosaur literally has horns anyways. Um, okay. But I think, yeah, I think, Colin, what you were saying, I think bo was on her own journey throughout the past days and she met i also think this is a way for her to unite mandalore i still think she's on that path so i think by maybe aligning herself with the children of the watch because go back to her first reaction when she ran into into din in in episode three of season two she's like you are a member of the children of the watch yeah. An extreme cultist, like she went on this very whole thing, very judgmental, and it. she even yeah. mocked him, like this yeah. is the way, and you know, it, yeah, exactly. If she wants to unite Mandalore, she has to unite all of Mandalore, all of Mandalore, and, and that includes the children of the Lord. So I so. exactly. So I felt like this was her her moment, just being like, "Damn it, I'll just do it. I'll just do what they say." And also, she doesn't have much of a choice because then where else is she gonna go if she takes off yeah. her helmet? So she might as well just keep it on for the well, moment there's this thing called lying that people like you know do and i could just <laughs> just definitely see her just being like oh yeah sure oh, and sure. and and she's right. in the next room she's like oh all right yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. We'll, we'll definitely see her take off the helmet um all sooner right. rather than later because katie sackoff has too much of a beautiful face for us not to see yeah. it again <laughs> let, yeah, me sip, of, let me sit let me sit for katie anyway um <laughs> all right so <laughs> So let's let's uh, wrap this up with a few questions. Mike, do do we want to get to any of the questions on the Instagram real quick? Yes, we, yes, we do. Um, real quick, follow us at the Star Wars Exchange on Instagram, the SW Exchange. We're about to hit 400 followers. Follow us, and you can ask us questions every week. We're going to start answering um, your questions here and, and even just mentioning comments. So I want to start off with um, – we'll start off with quick – Chris McManus, and he just has a comment. He says, I believe the behavior from the New Republic starts to show why they get destroyed by the First Order and the Force Awakens. Yeah. Yeah. I yep. agree. Yeah. Good yep. comment. Um, okay. And now here's a question from A. I wish I could say Coop Durper. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to say it, but you know who you <laughs> nice, are. Mike. Nice, um, nice. Will Bo be a concurrent or help? Uh, to Mando slowly becoming the ruler of Mandalore. What do you think, Colin? I don't... So, I don't think that Mando... All right, so I've got two theories. Either I don't think Mando's going to be up for it, and and then he's just going to hand the sword over, or I think that there's going to be some weird discovery that he's related to uh, to Tar Vizsla or something like that. Um, But I, I, I highly doubt it. Uh, but I think in some way, I think Din would be a great leader. I think by the end of the series, for for some reason, like Bo gets killed and then he ends up taking the mantle, something in the lines of that. But I could definitely see mm. him leading the people at some point because I think his people skills are getting a lot better than what they used to be when we yeah. first saw him. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think I think it's leading up to Din leading 
And yeah. last one, Fox Force Fab asks, and Ari, you could answer this one. Do you yeah. reckon? Oh, and there you go. Ari's language. Do you reckon Vizsla will try and kill Bo Katan? <laughs> um, man. He did. He was looking this is my very answer. weird. Okay. <laughs> I hope so, because it would be very interesting to see. Whoa, okay. I, I would lean more likely. I'd say more likely than unlikely that. I don't know if he's going to try kill her, but there's definitely going to be a confrontation. Yeah. And I hope it gets as heated as it possibly can, because that's going to be very interesting to see. Let's see if it's well, well written. <laughs> yeah. Because exactly. I disagree. I think season one of Mandalorian is so special and untouchable and just up there. And season two is just a step down into the writing and all that. I think season one is just chef's kiss, but that's a different discussion. Um, but yeah, I think that pretty much wraps up our discussion, Ari. Yes, it does. It does. Um, so yeah, before before we finish, massive thank you to Colin from coming for coming on. Um, any final words on the episode? Any anything you want to wrap up with? I uh, didn't see any Max Rebo stuff. I'm still waiting for the scene from Tatooine where we just see him walking on the streets putting up Safe you know sound. yeah like yeah. Of, of, of just having his resume of just going to different like clubs and being like hey i'm available i'm here please hire me <laughs> yes yeah, yeah for sure uh yeah. yeah colin it's been a pleasure thank you very much you can check him yeah. out on the star wars stuff podcast um yeah so tune in next week episode rating. four we'll be covering oh we have to do a rating oh my god we have to out do of 10. colin what do you think of the episode <laughs> oh rating uh of this episode i i give it a solid seven Yep, same. Mine. Same here. Seven. Yeah, I'll give it a seven just to keep oh, it. Three keep seven. It average, <laughs> average clean. Wow, that was the that quickest ratings we've ever done. And that was I love Beautiful. that. We should do that every week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> isn't it nice when we all agree? Right. Uh, anyway, but yeah, Mike, where can the good people find you? You guys about? can follow me all underscore Star Wars on Instagram, Twitter, and please, please, we have we just hit. Um, uh 190 spotify followers if you're mm. if you're listening to us on apple Podcasts, spotify yeah. all those rate us five stars give us five stars we have like 40 ratings on spotify already um and yeah. we which we appreciate it if you're on apple Podcasts, drop us a review also we appreciate that it helps us get to more people and talk more mando so appreciate you guys and absolutely instagram we're always posting on there yeah. check us out for yeah. behind the scene highlights and all that at the sw exchange podcast yeah instagram page you guys have to follow it go yep. check it getting close to 500 followers so join us on that journey you can find me at star wars underscore exchange on instagram and on twitter at the sw exchange um but yeah subscribe on youtube if you're watching on youtube like all that we appreciate it we'll see you all next week and uh as always may the force be with you see you later adios hashtag max Rebel live